Hi there, I'm Nathan and this is the Unboxing Channel. Let's talk about Apple. Now chances are you're new here, so you'd be well within your rights to label me as an Apple fanboy and click off the video. But fanboy is a strong word. I have great respect for Apple's design principles, and ultimately I just enjoy the devices and the operating systems that they maintain. But I'm not opposed to being critical of their shortcomings either. Take the iPhone 6 for example. Apple took what was essentially the greatest designed smartphone in history and just kind of pushed it aside in favour of this more rounded design. Now, I wasn't a very big fan of that and to this day I'm still not, but that's where this guy comes into play. And after all, this is the unboxing channel, so I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this and I'll go into a bit of detail about the box. However, you might wanna stick around because I have a lot more to share afterwards. So let's just jump into this. All right, so here it is, the iPhone 12 Pro. I like that they've gone back to the iPhone 8 design with the black box. It really just gives a more edgy, cooler vibe, like this is different. Uh, I just, I really love the, uh, the slimmer packaging actually. There's not a whole lot to say about the packaging. You've just got your iPhone on the front. Uh, you've got a bit of text on the back as well as serial numbers, etc. And then a very hard to see iPhone logo right there on both sides. Apple logo at the top. And that is it. So here we go. Classic Apple fashion. It's the same unboxing experience as you would normally expect for an iPhone, just a bit slimmer. Now, when I talk about, in my other videos, a lid coming off of a box, I compare it to the lid coming off of an Apple box. Because that's, that, this just sets the bar for what lids should be on boxes. There's just something so perfect about the way they do that. I've got a little indentation up here for the camera. Here's the phone itself. Oh, it's just, <laughs> hey. So seeing that new design, oh, it's just, BAM! Okay, here is the iPhone 4, here is the iPhone SE, and we've got the iPhone 5 on the side. This phone really, really does complement these iPhones so nicely. That was a decent sound. So before the rest of the video, let's just see what we get inside the box. We've got our SIM ejection tray, <laughs> and just the one Apple sticker. And we got no charging brick, which is fine because I have plenty. And here is the uh, Lightning 2 USB-C cable. All right, so pretty high points for style and material. Not too much plastic going on. However, the unboxing experience isn't at all that unique. And while truly elegant, it doesn't get full marks for economy because of that USB-C to Lightning cable, which just makes no sense. Overall though, the iPhone 12 unboxing scores a 9.2 out of 10. So overall, not too shabby. Now the specs of the iPhone 12 are something that's really interesting for me. The A14 chip has the smallest nanometer- uh, Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. This isn't an iPhone 12 review. Like this iPhone has an incredible feature set that I could go on for hours about. The new camera tech, the new materials, improved durability. <sighs> Am I boring you yet? You see, you've already heard this from your favorite tech creators. And I get it, specs are great. New shiny toy is a new shiny toy. But let's step back a second and look at why this phone, well, means something to me and maybe even to you as well. This is an iPhone 4 running iOS 5. It's very hard to come by and it's also completely useless in the modern age, but it has design principles that I would gladly use again today. Now, I'm an unashamed skewmorephile, which Sounds suggestive, but it basically means that I really like this bubbly, realistic interface that the iOS 5, iOS 6 era made really good use of. You remember this, right? If you're around my age, then chances are you had an iPod Touch back in circa 2010 that you coveted and then guarded like a treasure once you got your hands on it. And same goes for me. And in 2013, when Scott foresaw Bless that man. I was five. Refused to apologize for the absolute blunder that Apple Maps was, along came Sir Johnny Ive and shifted the iOS paradigm by creating the design interface that we know and either love or hate today. But, 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 but let's just back up a second because this isn't a history of Apple. And my point is the iPhone 4, 4S, 5, 5S, they're all a testament to the design principles that myself and many Apple fans and fanboys alike all grew up with. When you hold an iPhone 5 in your hand, you can just feel how 
meticulous and well-crafted the design is. It feels solid, like it was meant to be used. And then along came the iPhone 6 with its weird camera bump and antenna lines and it just kind of felt like that the meticulous design era of the iPhone had just sadly come to an end. Until now. This, my friends, is what I would personally call the best looking iPhone since the iPhone SE. The 5 and 5S is a strange twin cousin. Don't get me wrong, I'm personally a big fan of the iPhone 10 design as well. But if you take these two designs and slam them together, you get this. A precise, glorious design that demands to be looked at. Now let me take you back to 2019. 2019 was the year of nostalgia. We had a lot of nostalgic memes coming up with children's TV shows and films being referenced, but obviously the biggest thing that went towards that nostalgia was the resurgence of none other than Minecraft. But why in 2019? Well, it's simple really, because the people who played Minecraft when they were younger, in 2011, 2012, finally grew up to be adults and to be able to look back on their childhood and see Minecraft as part of the memories that made their childhood so fun and carefree. And this design is exactly what the iPhone is for me. Why bother going back to the square design? Because they didn't really reference it in their advertisements. They just mentioned that it was a precision cut aluminium. Other than that, they didn't really say why they've gone back to this design. And I think it's a marketing tactic. And you can say it's shady, you can say whatever you want, because companies, they love to capitalize on nostalgia. And that's just a fact. But I have to say, in this case, for me personally, it's kind of working. And I'm all for it. Take macOS 11 Big Sur. It's finally shaking up the design of Apple's interface by introducing none other than skeuomorphic elements again. Apple quite proudly boasts their new icons. And frankly, I wouldn't be at all surprised if they made their way to iOS 15. So users can move fluidly between their Apple devices. So this is not an iPhone 12 review. But with that being said, and at the time of recording this voiceover, I don't even have the iPhone yet and I already love it. Now you can call me a fanboy in the comments right after you uh, drop a like and subscribe of course, but I grew up with this stuff. It's the reason I have that collection behind me. It's the reason that I love buying devices with old firmwares because it's nostalgic for me. And it's the reason I bought a 12 Pro. Yeah, the specs are great, sure. It's got that A14, it's got that great camera bump. But at the end of the day, for me, this phone just marks a clear indication of where Apple is headed. Back to form. And you could blame it on Johnny Ives' departure from Apple and his iron grip on minimalism is finally freed. But I have nothing against minimalism. In fact, I'm kind of nostalgic for iOS 7 as well as iOS 6. You can theorize whatever you want, but this gradual change into a more classic design era is just what I have been wanting. And maybe even without knowing, you have too. So thanks for watching this video. Like if you like it, subscribe if you feel like it, and I'll leave you with this quote that you've probably heard from Steve Jobs himself. <laughs>